Our planet has endured 11 straight months of record-breaking heat. Now, that's according to the latest report by the EU's Copernicus Climate Service. Last month was the hottest April since records began capping almost an entire year of global temperature records. Worldwide, average temperatures were almost 0.7 degrees Celsius higher than the same period from 1990... Excuse me, from the period from 1991 to 2020. Eastern Europe, Eastern Asia and Africa have been hit the hardest. The oceans also measured record temperatures in April for the 13th month in a row. Uh, to help us understand the consequences of this, I'm joined now by Carlo Buontempo, the director of the EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service. Welcome to DW, Mr Buontempo. Good to have you with us. Now, this is the 11th month in a row that has shattered all previous temperature records. Um, are we looking at the new normal here? Is it going to get worse? Can it be regulated? Can you help put it into perspective for us? Yes, uh, it's a very good question. And in a sense, I would like to say, yes, this is the new normal, because this would, would give us the, the feeling that this is a steady state. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We are moving towards a climate that is already unprecedented. You, you were saying, stating the, the figure that appears in the, in the monthly bulletin today and the figure that appeared in the state of the climate that we released a couple of weeks ago. And they describe a climate that is already fundamentally different from the climate in which we grew up, the climate in which our civilization thrived. Mm. And this is not stopping here, it's continuing, because we have now built so much extra energy into the climate system, into the ocean, into the atmosphere, that this is driving temperature up, and we are bound to see new records uh, coming up. So this year is not yet certain whether it will be a record-breaking year or not, but we have now already four months in, we have four months of record-breaking months. So, in a sense, the rest of the year will need to be extremely cold for 2024 not to become uh, yet another record-breaking month. Okay. And independently of what's happening in 2024, we're bound to see new record in the next few years. I see. Now, there are notable differences, aren't there, in how the changing weather patterns are uh, affecting different regions. For example, Eastern Africa and Southern Europe are now drier. Northern Europe is getting wetter. Tell us how this will potentially reshape our planet socially and economically. What, what effect is that going to have? Well, that's, in a sense, our expertise sits on the climate, so the impact of the climate on, on uh, human activities is uh, an, an extra level of complexity that adds on top of that. But if you look at uh, the climate and how this is changing, as, as you were saying, we do see a drying of, of the Mediterranean, for instance. This is due to a moderate decrease in precipitation and an increase in, in evaporation. And at the same time, we do see more uh, energy into the system, more water vapor into the atmosphere, and this water vapor is, is driving more intense uh, precipitation. So we have seen in the last year these extreme precipitation events, such as the flooding in Greece, in Slovenia, in, uh, in Italy, and uh, in, in, in Libya. And these are the, the profound consequences of, uh, on local activities and, and livelihoods. So this these kinds of events are likely to go to increase in, uh, in, in intensity so, okay. uh, as a consequence of climate change. Mm -hmm. And given the current geopolitical tensions we're seeing around the world, the conflicts, I mean, do people have the time and energy to give the climate crisis the attention it deserves? Well, in a sense, for me, we need to start looking at the climate data and information that national health services and organizations such as Copernicus or ECNWF provide openly and freely to everyone, because we do know something about the climate and how this is changing. And this is a, an asset, a strategic asset that can inform our decision in the long term. In a sense, we don't know what, what the inflation rate will be next year or whether the next conflict uh, or where it will take place. But we do know that sea level will be three millimeters higher next year. And we are not yet taking full advantage of this information for the strategic value it has. Carlo Buontempo, the director of the Coper Copernicus Climate Change Service. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.